Before I cut out, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll go and uh, get to the end of the cigar, but I do want to say for all of you who were following the whole jar collecting scene, we do have some new jars to go through. Um, the Namely, this uh, Bolivar, Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenida, um, Germany jar, Alemania, Regional Edition Alemania, and the uh, Juan Lopez Distinguidos jar. Uh, of each of these, they made 600, okay? And when they first came out, they cost about five, six hundred bucks. Now, uh, I found them on an auction site on uh, London Cigar Auction, England Cigar Auctions. Uh, one of these is in England. I think it's cigarauction.co.uk. And uh, the Juan Lopez jar went for something like eleven hundred pounds, or was it, it, it like eleven hundred pounds or? Or is it a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It went, it went for the equivalent of about fourteen to 1500 U.S. dollars. And the Bolivar jar did the same. And so for me, that was a real nice, nice surprise. You know, I was like, yeah. Because even though those jars are numbered low at 600, I was like, you know, those two regional editions are available in the boxes too. So it's not like the China Distinguidos where you can only get that cigar from the jar. Um, but there you have it. And I think it's because of those auctions and because of people buying these jars at such high prices that they've decided, you know what, we there's a lot of interest here. We can do some pretty cool things. And one thing they do, even the Partagas uh, travel retail jar, which used to sell for four and change, the P1s, that's uh, the only place I can find this now. Is um, actually, I'm sorry, there's two places I can find it. One of them it sells for $848, double. And the other one, it sells for over a thousand. Unfucking real, you know, unreal. And so I am very glad I bought these when I did. The La Gloria Cubana jar, uh, that thing had has auctioned previously for over two thousand dollars on Cigar One, and is also very hard to find uh, if you can find it. So I think they're a good investment. I think it's safe to say that in twenty years, the entire. And also, of course, remember if you have one jar and it's full and okay that's great but if you have a set of 20 of these things forget it so jars coming out now typically aren't four or five hundred dollars anymore they're typically more like eight hundred to a thousand dollars the San Cristobal Torian jar which has just come out which they made uh, two thousand of beautiful jar his first jar that's what I love to every jar is so different this one has an ashtray you put the top on, and then the ashtray goes on the top. It makes it kind of look like a rook, like a castle. 25 big San Cristobal Torian cigars. This shape is available only in the jar, so it's kind of like the P1 jar. It's not a regional release. They came out with a couple of other jars recently, and these are big ones. One is the 20th Anniversary Pacific Cigar Company jar. Gorgeous jar. Absolutely beautiful. Does it contain any unique cigars? No, but what it does contain it are some of the better releases from uh, Pacific Cigar Company. It's an Asian release, it's an Asian region release. Um, not, not a regional cigar, but cigars from the Asian region. And it contains, I think, four of five different kinds of Robustos, 20 cigars total. Cohiba, Partagas D, Cohiba Robusto, Partagas D4, um, Hoya de Monterey, Epicure Number no. 2, and then a K d'Orsay, uh, regional edition and a Por La Arnaga regional edition. So it's a nice little group of cigars. One thing I'm wondering though is, is it going to be wise to age that many different brands in such close proximity to each other? Remember, aging in a jar is different than aging in an open humidor, you know? Um, I don't think it's really going to be good for an overall flavor profile to have a bunch of Cohiba Robustos sitting with something as mild as a Por La Arnaga for however many years. Um, but whether or not you choose to take the cigars in or out, they only made a thousand of them, I think a thousand and fifty, uh, and those are going for about fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars, and they're very hard to find. Uh, the reason for that being that sixty percent right now of all collectible cigars belong to Hong Kong, believe it or not. So when this thing came out, being an Asian regional, Asian uh, region release, they bought them. As we're going along on this, <laughs> it's getting better and better. Developing uh, a much deeper kind of, uh, almost a co the cocoa bean 
the best way I could describe it is the cocoa is transforming into coffee. That's what it kind of feels like. Um, yeah, it's developing a deeper base that kind of hits you in the roof of the mouth. <laughs> delicious. Just delicious. Uh, oh, man. Definitely get your hands on some Upmans and age them. That's my advice to you. I like the smaller Vitolas. My personal favorite sizes are uh, Coronas, Robustos. Um, once in a while you'll see me with a Toro or even a Churchill or any, I smoke every size cigar, but most often I like the Robustos, short Robustos, things like uh, short Churchills, uh, Florida Cano, short Robustos, those little guys, and then Corona size cigars like these are just about perfect. Um, you know, so anyway, we're talking about jars, we're talking about what we got, what it's worth, and we're talking about the new releases of this year. One of the uh, most surprising releases to a lot of people was, uh, believe it or not, the La Excepcion, uh, Excepcion jar, um, which uh, contains 30 of the of last year's Selectos Finos regional uh, regional edition um, <laughs> Italy. Okay, it's a mouthful. It's the La Excepcion Selectos Finos Regional Edition Italy. And they made a bunch of these last year. It was uh, and, and, and it was wonderful. Basically, they brought bra back an extinct brand. They had such good fortune when they did this with Florida Cano, when they brought in the uh, Reynos Unidos Edition Short Robustos, that they decided, you know what, let's do another type of thing like this. And they did it for Italy. And basically, the Selectos Finos was a Lancero-sized cigar, very strong, powerful, kind of reminiscent of the Cohiba uh, Lanceros to me. Um, great cigar, great cigar. You could still get boxes here and there on certain sites for about five to six hundred dollars. However, the jar that they came out with is going online now for, get ready, seventeen hundred. What? Hold on. I could get a box of 25 for five to six hundred, but a jar of 30 is 1700. Yeah. And why? Well, because they know how to grab the collectors by the nutsack and twist real hard. And how do they do that? Well, first, they make a very low number. Only 200 of these jars were made. That's it. 200. And the truth is that they weren't supposed to cost that much. The original idea when they first came out was that if you buy two boxes, and I forget, like, I don't know exactly where they were selling this. It had it's somewhere in Italy. But buy two boxes of Selectos Finos, that's 50 cigars, that's about 1900 to 1000 $1, and you get a jar for an extra hundred bucks. So the jar, therefore, is worth a hundred bucks. Anyway, after that, they sold out immediately. And there was one site that I found, uh, an Italian pipe site, um, that was selling this jar for about four to five hundred, I forget, it's like 465, 465 euros, something like that. Didn't include the two boxes. It was one jar full of 30 Selectos Finos, and it was, okay, about 500 euros. That's about... I guess 750, 800 US dollars. And, uh, but much better deal than what you can get it for now. In fact, you cannot find this jar anywhere. Uh, I had my fingers on it from a, a, the La Casa del Habano Belgium site in Nock, Germany. And I sent an email telling the guy, please hold this for me. He sent an email back. Will do. Uh, it was like a Sunday. Once I get back tomorrow, I'll put it aside. That night, somebody swooped in and bought. To make matters worse, there were two jars on that site that the guy was going to hold. That and the Pacific jar bought them both. So now, I finally found another La Cepcion jar. The Pacific jar I can't fucking find anywhere. Funny, because they made a thousand of those and only 200 Cepcion jars. And I found an Cepcion jar on uh, a website from England. Uh, we all know the English sites, they, they don't ship. Anyway, but because of a lot of different things, I hopefully, fingers crossed, the transaction is supposed to go through tomorrow. So, did I just spend $1,700 on a jar uh, full of cigars that's worth about 600 Yeah. Am I absolutely fucking insane? Yeah. 
but what I'm hoping is more that I don't think this particular one being that there's only being that there's 200 of them it might climb a little in value full and everything mint with the box but I don't think it's ever going to be worth a hell of a lot more than 1700 until the cigars get to be like 10 15 years old however I do believe that like I always say as a whole because I'm not selling this jar that jar as a whole the La Cepcion jar will be a big staple in the overall value of the collection. You know, when you look at the collection, say, oh, you have this, you have that, you have that. But you know, there's 5,000 of those made, 5,000 of those made, even though they're worth this amount of money. The rarity of the collection goes up with each more rare piece you add to it. So, adding a La Cepcion jar is going to be like almost like another crown jewel to me, like uh, the La Gloria Cubana jar. You know, nothing will ever beat that La Gloria Cubana jar because it's the first ever and for a long time was the only Cuban regional release. Uh, just this past year we do have the um, El Rey del Mundo Infantes, which makes this the first still, but it's not alone I was a alone little worried anymore. when I first pulled the cigar from the jar. I was like, hmm. And after this... I probably will, and not for this reason, I, I have Boveda 72% packs in my jars. I'm going to change to 69s because I'm planning on long-term aging. However, the 72 pack was in this jar for a year and a half, almost two years, you know, and uh, I changed it out once, and I was afraid when I picked up this cigar, it felt a little, you know, it didn't feel mushy at all, but just the kind of foot of it gave me a, a feeling that, well, maybe there's a little too, but you know what? Not at all. This cigar didn't go out once. The entire time I'm talking, conversing, and smoking it casually. That's another thing, you know. A well, a cigar going out may have something to do with the roll, but it's probably more, if it's a good roll, which we know it is, it's probably more likely the humidity, you know. So if your cigar, if you can't talk for five minutes and your cigar keeps going out, then they're too And we'll finish it up you know? and uh, we'll give some final notes on it. And then sooner than later, we will go and smoke the newer, produced just this year, uh, well, end of 2013, Magnum 46 cigar, and uh, see how it holds up to a seven-year-old Magnum 46. All right. We're on the last third of our Magnum 46 here, and I gotta say, it's unbelievable. It just, the flavor just keeps getting more and more intense, but without becoming muddied, uh, which is characteristic of a lot of you know, I find that in a lot of stronger cigar, younger cigars uh, that will end up being good, like the whole flavor and everything starts out great at the beginning, but it just gets just all muddled and I like to say muddy because it just starts to taste like just overpowering, just like, wow, this cigar doesn't do that at all. Um, the notes are still all well-defined, beautiful burn, beautiful ash, great construction, no problems, uh, no draw problems, no burn issues, you know. It's always harder to enjoy a cigar when you're trying to think of well, what to say next in a review and everything, but uh, if it wasn't for that, uh, you know, and the fact that I got so much else going on right now, I don't know. I, I, this cigar, out of, out of 10 points, it at least gets a 9. At least. Uh, if I was sitting down relaxing at the end of the day and everything was done and, you know, the situation was a little different, this may be, for me, personally, a straight 10 cigar. Uh, it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. Just great, you know. Right. Down to a, about an inch and a half. And... Oh, even at this uh, length, there's a lot to be had from this cigar. This is the type of cigar that I would uh, definitely be burning my fingers with, you know. I'm starving. I just ordered some food. Um, I don't think we're going to... You know, we're at the last third here, so we're probably not going to learn much more uh, by getting down to the very very end I'm definitely gonna finish this and if there's anything wild like fireworks uh, in the last quarter inch I'll let you know but I think at this point this cigar is pretty much uh, it is what it is and what it is is fantastic I highly recommend um, if you can get your hands on any uh, Magnum 46's um, from between 2007 and 8 uh, go for it. If you can't, which you're probably going to have a hard time doing that, uh, get yourself a new box and sit on them.
sit on them. And they're not expensive. Magnum 46 is not an expensive cigar. I think a box of 25 shouldn't run you much more than 200. Uh, you may be able to find it right around there or like, you know, a little under at some places, but uh, it's, it probably costs two and a quarter at, at most uh, appropriate sites at an appropriate price to between, let's just say, between two and two fifty, depending on where you're going. Uh, like I said, definitely a nine. Situational uh, differences providing, I would say a ten. But uh, if you like your cigars medium bodied with a lot of interesting. Uh, high notes and, and a characteristic, uh, an undertone that is characteristic of uh, H. Upman, then you will love this cigar. If you're a fan of, say, um, Monte Cristo and you haven't tried an H. Upman, I say definitely, definitely try it. Uh, the base of this cigar reminds me in some ways of Monte Cristo, uh, that strong um, cocoa coffee bean-esque flavor definitely reminds me of Monte Cristo, but the uh, body uh, Strength-wise, is more similar to say an Alredo Mundo uh, than a full-bodied Monte. Fantastic Cuban cigar. I, I think there's a reason that this is one of the oldest cigar brands around today, uh, and at 170 years old this year, I don't think it'll be going anywhere anytime soon. Um, when somebody says Cuban cigars, this is what I think. You know, this is this is what comes to mind. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic cigar, and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to uh, get these with that jar, you know. I mean, getting a jar of Magnum 46 is one thing, but I got awarded a vintage box, so that's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm Dr. Joe, and this is the Dr. Joe Show. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode, or at least got something interesting out of it. Um, we talked about a lot of different things, uh, and some of those things will be going into further detail in the episodes to come. Um, look for me soon, doing another cigar review, and we will be getting some jars in, so look for that. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, and, you know, if you like me at all, like my videos at all, or have any questions, you know, subscribe and email. That's what I love. I will answer your emails. I'll do my best. I know I haven't been able to answer them all in the past, over the past year, but I tried to get to a few, and, uh, um, thanks for watching, you know, means a lot. Keep on smoking, buddy.